Hello and welcome to the talk with Tariro. Today on the show, we are discussing one pertinent issue which we are grappling with uh, in Zimbabwe. It being a sexual and reproductive health uh, rights issue, uh, one organization actually saw it fit to carry out a research for us to understand this particular issue. The issue that we are discussing today is uh, uh, it's tiny tying in a way obstetric fistula. I hope I've said it okay, but uh, definitely the professionals are going to be unpacking it uh, for us and um, to help us really get an ap appreciation in terms of uh, the social aspects, the health aspects of it. We have uh, Rosalina Mzereng, who is a campaigns coordinator with uh, um, uh, Amnesty International. And then next week, we are going to be having a medical practitioner really unpacking this issue. But today, we would want to, under, to get an understanding in terms of what pushed an institution to actually go deeper into the communities and get an appreciation in terms of how severe is uh, the problem in our country. Rosalina, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much, Tari. Yes. Uh, maybe let's start off with um, your mandate when it comes to uh, sexual and reproductive health rights issues as um, uh, Amnesty International. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Tari. Um, maybe dating back to 2014, Amnesty International launched a global campaign, My Body, My Rights, which was focusing on sexual reproductive health rights with the aim of advocating for governments to ensure that... Um, sexual, reproductive, and health rights are protected, they are fulfilled, and women are able uh, to enjoy their lives, you know, managing their own bodies, not being told when to have children and how many children to have, not being told whether to abort or not, mm. not, not being forced to, you know, to, to terminate an abortion. Mm. So there are so many aspects around ensuring that women are able to control their bodies. So that's why we had the my Body, My Rights mm -hmm. campaign, which was a global campaign. And then locally in Zimbabwe, we actually uh, carried out a research, which, which was called uh, Lost Without Knowledge, which was focusing on barriers to access to sexual, reproductive, and health rights services, mm. among them resulting in uh, child marriages, which we are grappling with at the moment. Mm. So we are focusing on advocating to ensure that governments protect the sexual reproductive health rights of, of, of women and girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely making sure that uh, as uh, women, mm -hmm. uh, me being a woman, mm -hmm. I'm sure this is um, <laughs> a noble campaign. So mm -hmm. when we're looking at uh, your research now on obstetric fistula mm -hmm. uh, in our country, what would you say then prompted you to carry out this research? Okay, the, maybe let me just define. I know the doctor will speak more mm -hmm. in detail. So that for the benefit of uh, for the benefit of our of our listeners and our viewers, mm -hmm. that obstetric fistula is a, is a, is, a, is an injury that happens at birth that that creates a hole between the vagina and the and, and, and you know and the and the canal mm -hmm. and then between the um, uh, the the urinary tract and then there's a hole that is created that may, then results in you know leakage of fuel of uh, of uh, urine or mm. leakage of, of uh, feces the individual is not able to control the feces so what then happens is when you are just seated you you are wet mm. when you are just seated you have soiled yourself mm. so that is the condition that um, um, um most women some women and girls are living with in, in rural areas so what prompted us to carry out the research uh tari is that zimbabwe has got one of the highest uh maternal mortality rates yes. not only in the region but in the whole world. What? Yes. Wow. According to the World Health Organization, uh -huh. we've got the highest maternal mortality rate. And there is also um, insufficient information about maternal morbidity mm. or injuries that happen at birth. So we thought it prudent. Um, now good maternal morbidity. morbidity. You know, with, with, <laughs> with us on watching on TV, yes. you as development practitioners, yeah. when we're talking about maternal mortality, maternal, mm. maternal morbidity, mm -hmm. what exactly? Maybe unpack it in simpler terms for, okay. for us. Yes. Okay. When we talk of uh, maternal morbidity, mm -hmm. we are talking about an injury that happens during childbirth. Uh -huh. And then when you talk of maternal mortality is the death that happens during childbirth. Mm -hmm. So you find that uh, once, once we know that our maternal mortality has been decreasing since mm. uh, maybe 2010 when it was at 960 deaths yes. for every 100,000 births. 
and then it decreased a little to 650 in um, 2014 and then decreased again mm -hmm. to 462 mm -hmm. in 20, uh, 20, 2019 around yes. there. There's been a decrease, yes, in maternal mortality in the deaths that happens during childbirth, but it remains one of the highest. So we thought that it was okay for us to then dig deeper and find out the socioeconomic dimension mm -hmm. of, 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 maternal, of maternal mortality and maternal morbidity. Yes. And also when you look at the sustainable development goals, one of the indicators is the reduction of of, of, yes. of, of, of maternal mortality. Mm. So we, we thought it was also important for us to add to the, to the body of knowledge yes. around issues to do with uh, sexual reproductive health rights, particularly when you look at injuries that happen at birth mm. and the deaths that happen at, uh, at birth. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, looking at um, your research, I'm not going to go into uh, mm. uh, the findings. We'll mm. look at those uh, mm. in, in our second segment. Mm. But really, which areas did you actually carry out your, your research in the country? Was it nationwide or you focused on a specific geographical area? We, we, we focused on six provinces. Mm. We, we looked at, uh, we went to Mashona Land West, Mashingo, Harare, uh, Manika Land, uh, Blawayo, and Mashona Land East. Those are the areas that we went to. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And uh, in general, when you're looking at, um, at our health-seeking behaviors, mm -hmm. As, um, as women, particularly here, I'm looking at prenatal mm -hmm. health-seeking behaviors mm -hmm. uh, for women right in the rural areas. How have or how are they uh, when you're looking just a case or analysis in terms of that? Okay, uh, the prenatal behaviors, uh, you know, health-seeking behaviors, uh, particularly in rural areas where this uh, obstetric fistula is, is, is prevalent, it's, it's, uh, it's not encouraging at mm -hmm. all. Uh, you, because you find that women would rather have, you know, they would rather not go to the clinic to deliver a baby. Mm. They would rather do it at home. Okay. And we will continue with uh, yes, the yes. discussion yes. after the break. Yes, that's mm. our rose there, uh, giving us more in terms of uh, women's sexual and reproductive health rights uh, issues. And uh, our main focus is uh, the research that they did on obstetric fistula and we'll hear more in terms of what are the findings considering that uh, from what she's saying we have a highest number of uh, maternal mortality which means women who are actually pregnant and are dying worrying situation indeed and it's something that we would need to address as a country join us after the break Welcome back. We continue with uh, our discussion where today we are looking at um, an Amnesty International Commission research on obstetric fistula in Zimbabwe. So let's go on to now focus on what did you then find out in the six districts um, that you, did you say six districts or six provinces? Six provinces. Six provinces, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. What were your major findings? Okay, thank you so much, Tari. You know, uh, our major findings uh, were that, you know, my, uh, obstetric fistula, is, um, is a condition that so many women are living with, unaware mm. that it's a condition that is one, not only preventable, but, only, but also uh, it can be cured through a corrective surgery. But there are women who are, you know, are at an, an acceptable risk of getting obstetric fistula. Mm. And we also found out that, you know, from a human rights perspective, when one has got obstetric fistula, there are so many rights that are taken away from that person, particularly when you look at the issue around the dignity, the dignity of a person, having to sit there and find that you have, you have sold yourself and maybe you are at so a So it will just happen unknowingly. Yes, you can't, you can't control your urine, you can't control your feces. So you find that the dignity of that person is, is taken away in, in so many ways. Mm. They are not able to move around. Maybe they are not able to go to funerals. They are not able to go to church. They, are not, they, they don't have freedom of movement mm. like anybody else because yes. they are so conscious of their condition. Mm. And uh, in addition to that, they are isolated by society. They are ostracized by society. They are labeled by society because our society does not understand what obstetric fistula is mm. because it is, it is you know, it is, um, there are so many myths 
surrounding uh, these conditions. What are those? Because we would mm. want people to actually know, especially looking at the myths mm -hmm. in our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe unpack those myths as well. Yes, you know, there are quite a number of myths. Maybe I'll talk about maybe about two or three of yes. the myths. One of the myths is that you have been, you are cursed. You have been bewitched. That's why you have this condition. Mm -hmm. Or maybe the child that you gave birth to does not belong to the Mseama clan oh or to goodness. the, you ah. know, to whatever clan it is. Mm. Some believe that uh, it is, a, you know, it is a case from the gods. Others believe that it is because of an STI. So this, these are some of the, the myths that sur mm. surround, yeah. you know, it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a mysterious disease, yet it is preventable. Like I said, mm. it is curable. And what we also discovered, um, uh, um, what is also what we also discovered is that uh, not sufficient resources have been um, you know put to the Ministry of Health and Child uh, and Child Care to take care of sexual mm. reproductive and health rights issues. Mm. So we also discovered that the issue around uh, free maternal health services is not actually what is happening on the ground. There are so many costs that uh, women in care mm. that they are afraid to in care such that they end up giving birth uh, in um you know at home mm -hmm. through traditional birth attendance yes so women are living with that condition undiagnosed mm. you know tari we went to mutare we talked to a woman who has been living with um, obstetric fistula for 44 years mm -hmm. leaking urine 44. yes and we we really appreciate and commend you know the program that government came up with yes. uh, of uh, fistula camps uh, that happen in Chinoy and Mashoko. So when we then interviewed her, she had already undergone the corrective surgery and her life um, was back to normal. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the major findings yeah. uh, th that that we had that we you know that we found out as we went out doing our mm -hmm. our research. Yeah, and you spoke about fistula camps, what are those? Okay, fistula camps, this is a, a government program through the Ministry of Health and Child uh, Care, where they bring in experts, mm -hmm. you know, to carry out corrective surgery on, on cases of obstetric fistula that would have been identified uh, throughout the country. Mm. But one thing that I know, Tari, that also came out of the research is that people are not aware that there, is, there are such camps. Uh -huh. So, you know, people suffer in silence. People suffer for a very long time because they are not aware of mm. such programs. Mm. And they happen once a year through the Ministry of Health and Child Care. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and definitely uh, the fact that people actually are not aware that uh, mm. these camps are there. Mm. And some are not even aware when mm. they're having this condition mm -hmm. to then say this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. We then tend to rely on the myths mm -hmm. that uh, you mm -hmm. earlier spoke about. So I'm sure mm -hmm. a lot of women, in, even as families, we are getting an appreciation in terms of what this is mm -hmm. and knowing that, uh, like what she said, you can actually be treated. Mm -hmm. So from your research, uh, when you are looking at this condition, are there age groups that you would say are more prone to it or it cuts across all ages? Okay, maybe what I can say, Tari, is that uh, uh, obstetric fistula from our research findings cuts across all age groups, but it is more common in, 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 you know, in teenagers. We, our research found out that the, the, you know, there are girls who fall pregnant at 11, yeah. at 12, uh -huh. you know, maybe between 11 and 15. That's the age group that is mostly affected uh, uh, by obstetric fistula. Why? For the simple reason that the body, mm. as the doctor will unpack, yes. I, I wouldn't want to uh. get to, 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 you know, to get into the medical side of things. But because the body of the girl is not yet developed enough to be able to carry, to carry the baby and let alone, you know, mm. deliver the baby the obstetric, uh, obstetric lab labor happens mm -hmm. and then the girl develops uh, obstetric fistula. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you spoke about um, as a country, we're actually almost like at the top when it comes to maternal mortality. Mm -hmm. And we do know that maybe obstetric fistula contributes to that. Mm -hmm. But f specifically focusing on obstet obstetric fistula, mm -hmm as a country, mm -hmm. how are we faring compared to, maybe let's just look at maybe Southern Africa. Southern Africa. Yes. Okay, um, Tari, maybe one thing that is important for us to know is that globally, a, a obstetric fistula has been eradicated and uh, at least 2 million people live with the condition. But these 2 million people are in uh, Asia and Africa. And uh, we may not have the actual statistics to say okay 
in Zimbabwe, mm. we are the highest. Yes. But what made us come to that conclusion is our maternal mortality rate that is so high. And according to the World Health Organization, they are actually saying that uh, obstetric fistula could be 30 times high, higher than our maternal mortality, uh -huh. particularly here in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. But there are, like I say, said earlier on, we, we don't have the actual statistics, mm. you know, because there's been no deliberate effort to find out the, 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 the incidence mm. or the prevalence of maternal morbidity in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we will continue with um, our discussion and definitely I would want to, to, to find out maybe the doctor will unpack it for us. But do we really have a Shona name or a Debele name for it? Uh, I, I personally feel that women need to know more about uh, this condition because we might actually be experiencing, experiencing it on our way as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we've got people who prefer home deliveries mm -hmm. um, just being away in terms of... Uh, what are we putting ourselves through when we go through that? Join us after the break. We continue with our discussion. Welcome back. We continue with uh, our discussion. Rosa was wondering, maybe from your own perspective, as as, as an organization going into the community, mm -hmm. when you're talking to women in the in the villages, doing the research, uh, saying obstetric fistula uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of people, mm -hmm. they might not be aware. Is there a shona name so that uh, people get to know, or a debele name, or any of our local languages? To then they say, when we're talking about this condition, this is what we're talking about. Okay, thanks, Tari. Unfortunately, like I said, this condition is shrouded in a lot of mystery. Mm. There is no, there is actually no Shona name, no Debele name for obstetric fistula. That's, mm. that's, that's how mysterious this condition is. We're actually thinking of engaging, you know, linguists in, mm. at, the, at one of our universities mm. to say, help us come up with a term uh, 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 with the, with the, in the local language for obstetric fistula. There is no known mm. term you know, in our local languages. Yeah, for the with, condition. Uh, with no local name yeah. we, and this condition being mysterious like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And the question that comes to mind is, are women aware of this condition? Uh, Tari, it's not just the women in the rural areas, even in the urban areas. You know, at one time we had, um, we had a drama mm -hmm. just to... to, to, to to, to share with our, you know, women's caucus. Sometime when we we're carrying out the research, at that level, they did not know that there is anything called obstetric fistula. They know that uh, people uh, leak urine uh, uncontrollably. They know that people have got a fecal problem or incontinence, mm. but they are not aware that it is obstetric fistula. And because they are not aware, they are not also not even aware that it can be treated and that it can it can be prevented. Mm. They don't know what causes it. You know, this is the level where we are as a country that there's nothing really known about this condition. But what I know that is that UNFPA at some point carried out a research in 2005, but they were looking at the maybe more statistical mm, than, mm. Than, than the socioeconomic dimension mm -hmm. of, of, of obstetric fistula, but people just don't know that. Yes, yeah. uh, we don't know and uh, people don't no, know. Uh, and um, it's these researches that are done yes. and oftentimes it then ends there. Mm. What would you then propose should be done to address this fact that, mm. yes, this, this mysterious condition mm. is, privil is prevalent. We are losing lives mm -hmm. through this condition. What mm. should be done so that at least there is that awareness when you've done the research, mm -hmm. what next? I know this is one of the platforms mm -hmm. where you're actually making mm -hmm. sure that people mm -hmm. uh, get to know and have an appreciation of the condition. Mm -hmm. But what else should be done so that at least um, awareness in terms of this condition is up there? Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Tari. I think uh, uh, the campaign to end fistula really needs a coordinated yes. and comprehensive approach mm -hmm. from prevention, treatment, and cure. So what we recommend as Amnesty International, uh, we believe that the government can come up with a comprehensive human rights education program nationwide, mm -hmm. you know, 
to educate people about the causes of obstetric fistula, its existence, how it can be prevented, and how it can be treated. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier on, people don't know mm -hmm. about all these provisions. They don't know about the, um, the you know, the, the, the fistula camps that happen so that people can have corrective surgery. So I think it is it's one important step that the government needs to take so that uh, we can end fistula together. Mm -hmm. You know, need to ensure that the you know the free maternal health services are available so that uh, women do not shun health institutions for fear of the expensive that are associated with uh, with giving birth. Mm. So I think it's very very important as a preventive uh, measure. Another preventive measure is uh, you find that during our research we found out that uh, child marriages yes. is one of the drivers of obstetric fistula. So it's, I think it's high time we have a law that outlaws uh, child marriages. Mm. Because when you look at the case of Memory Machaya, now mm. Anna Machaya, Anna Machaya. Mm. Uh, it's a clear case of, uh, unfortunately for Anna, she passed on. Mm. So she goes into the statistics of maternal mortality. Yeah. Huh? And then uh, she was not for, so fortunate. But other young girls of her age, then get obstetric fistula. Mm. So you find that because girls are being married off at a young age, so we are calling on the government to make sure that we have a piece of legislation and yes. that piece of legislation is actually implemented and it is known by the communities. And another call for action, particularly targeting communities, is we all have a responsibility to play mm. in terms of reducing uh, um, child marriages mm. in our country. Mm. We need to report it. We don't. We do not, we do not need to participate mm -hmm. in, in in marrying off a, a, a girl child because it takes away a rights at times in a very final way, like in the case of uh, Memory Machai. Mm -hmm. What we are also recommending is that um, you know massive campaign countrywide mm -hmm. on the existence of uh, of, of child uh, marriages. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, when we're looking at uh, the issue of uh, child marriages, uh, you know, mm. I, I always say to people who I don't even want to call them marriages. Yes. Uh, it's, 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 it's purely mm. abuse. Mm -hmm. Because how mm. do you say I'm marrying somebody who's nine years, yes. 11 mm. years? Mm. Um, mm. We tend to have a mismatch. Mm -hmm. And when I'm saying uh, there is a mismatch, it's in terms of even having me as a health practitioner, mm -hmm. If an adolescent girl is coming to me at 11 and they're pregnant, mm -hmm. and I'm even saying we need to find a way of, of, of making sure they deliver safely, mm -hmm. but I'm not doing anything for the perpetrator to be arrested. Mm -hmm. How do we address that? Like I said, uh, Tari, we all need to come together. This is a problem that we are grappling uh, uh, with as a country. Mm. And uh, it doesn't put us in a good in a good light from a human rights perspective. So we are saying it is the responsibility of each and every one of us in whatever spaces we are in mm. to ensure that we report rape. Yes. It's rape, Tari. Mm. And whoever, you know, the perpetrator should just be held to account. Let's not hide behind, yes. you know, behind... Um, uh, uh, church doctrine or yes. whatever it is whilst we are breaking the law. Mm. So each of us in our individual spaces, whether be it in a hospital, be it in a police station, be it in the community. Mm. If you are, you know, we have child protection committees. Yes. What are they doing? Mm. They need to play a watchdog role in those communities, report rape and not to sit in a, in a congregation that is marrying off a child. Mm -hmm. So we each of us, it's not government responsibility yes. alone. Mm -hmm. It's the responsibility of civil society, it's the responsibility of communities, mm. families, you know, individual communities, you know, to uh, make sure that we, we contribute towards child marriages, we contribute towards ending rape, we contribute towards ending uh, maternal mobilities mm. like obstetric fistula. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely, uh, that's a, a call to action. It's not the government's role only you and I have a critical role to play. If we're going to be seeing cases of obstetric fistula going down, we have a role to play, particularly understanding how child marriages contribute to this. Let's make sure that uh, perpetrators are reported and are jailed. Next week, we're going to have uh, a medical doctor who is going to unpack this particular issue 
this mysterious condition that Rosa spoke about. So make sure you are with us again next week. Until we meet again next time, it's goodbye.